Good morning, everyone. A very special welcome to those who are joining us live stream and are very much part of our community here at Our Lady of Fatima this morning for this uh, Mass. We begin with an ancient Christian prayer and symbol in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And remember, I am with you always until the end of time. And remember, I am with you until the end of time words of Jesus in the gospel. Remember, Jesus could have said, I will be with you all days till the end of time, but he added that other thing. Remember. Remember, I'm with you always until the end of time. So we call on the presence of God in this feast of the Holy Trinity and we remember that God is always forgiving of us until the end of time. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came among us to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sin into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to humanity your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Ask now about former ages, long before your own, ever since the day that God created man on the earth. Ask from one end of heaven to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has its like ever been heard of? Has any people ever heard the voice of God speaking out of a fire as you have heard and lived? Or has any God ever attempted to go and take a nation from itself in the midst of another nation by trials, by signs, and wonders by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by terrifying displays of power, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? So acknowledge today and take to heart 
that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no other. Keep his statutes and his commandments, which I am commanding you today for your own well-being and that of your descendants after you, so that you may long remain in the land that the Lord God is giving you for all time. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Bless the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Bless the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And the breath of his mouth. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Bless the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver, to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. Bless the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Bless the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who was, who is, and who is to come, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came up and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Way back when I was first ordained, I found this particular feast really difficult to preach at, to give a, well, it was called a sermon, I guess, then, or homily. I mean, at Christmas, you had a whole story, 
surrounded with, or at Easter, Pentecost uh, last week, but the Feast of the Holy Trinity, I mean, here we have a Feast of God. I mean, what do you say? God is God is God. Um, I was aiming too high, you see, and that's what we frequently do with God. We aim too lofty. And then, somewhere along the line, I realized the truth of what Antonio read in me. God is the one who frees from slavery. That's who God is, and that's nitty-gritty. That's not lofty. You want to discover God? Go to the place where you are enslaved. What is it that in some way enslaves you today? Keeps you a lack of freedom? It could be addiction or a sense of uh, not having a good sense of self-worth, feeling that, that you're not really valuable, that you aren't really important to God and to, to others. Or maybe we can be enslaved by a lack of forgiveness that haunts us, a lack of forgiveness of ourselves. That's the biggie. Lack of forgiveness of ourselves. Lack of forgiveness of others. Either we haven't forgiven or they haven't forgiven us in this life. Grudges that are held that drag us down. Those are the things that enslave us. And that's not lofty or high. And you see, God comes there and God frees these people from slavery. And that's how they came to know God. So I would suggest that if I want to know God, then I go to the place that enslaves me, the place where I am not free, the place that controls me. At the time in the scriptures it simply says that the people cried out because they were in slavery they didn't say they cried out to God they didn't know God they just cried out they just said this is awful this is terrible and God heard them so remember that you know we may not know God very well or very much or others in the world who um, no sense of God as long as they cry out in their free slavery, God is the one who hears them. And as it said in that first reading, then God's the one who took them out of another nation, the ancient Egypt, and then brought them and gave them their own land. Now that's important for freedom, that one has one's own spot of ground, one's own land. That's how people are always kept enslaved, aren't they? We won't have any um, Jews living on our street. We won't have any blacks in our organization. We won't invite any gays to our street party or barbecue all kinds of things like that by excluding from a place to be. We will not allow people by not giving them so-called a land then we enslave them. So God not only gave them uh, brought them out to freedom from ancient Egypt but what then? God gave them a land. And we need that too. It's amazing how it works into all kinds of pious things. I would suggest uh, 
It was uh, was a time in my lifetime when uh, people were forced to live close to their work. And so the warden's house was next to the penitentiary, the principal's house was next to the uh, school, and the clergy house was next to the church. Now most Christian denominations have moved away from that, but it's still there for Roman Catholic clergy. They are not allowed their own place. They are uh, forced to live at the church in that and they are forced not to own anything, not to have anything. Hard to be truly free in those circumstances. Not having nothing saying these people can't live on our block or these people can't come to our organization. That's a way of enslaving people. It's a way of keeping people from going to their own land. And so once again, the gospel. In the midst of whatever we experience in life, of slavery or of difficulties and health or whatever, Jesus keeps saying to us, remember, remember, and we do always until the end of the age. We rise now. Let's pray for Pope Francis, who is a spokesperson for Jesus and God, calls us to true freedom calls us to have a land. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of those who are discriminated against, who cannot have their own place in this world, cannot have their own land. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of those who experience the restrictions and the um, slavery of control because of COVID. We cannot, we, we cannot move about. We cannot do the things we want. We cannot come together because we are in some way enslaved. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of those who are working to uh, area vaccine, those who have just developed it and those who administer it. Let us pray to the Lord. We pause for a moment to remember our own particular intentions and to remember especially the ways in which we are not free, we are enslaved by something. Pray for those that enslaved by addiction those enslaved by a lack of forgiveness of others, of ourselves. It's because of a poor self-image. For all of our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Remember those who are sick, those who have died, especially Mr. Gonzalez. We pray to the Lord. Faithful and loving God, hear these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human ends have made. 
it will become for us the bread of life. the mystery of this water and this wine, may we become partakers of the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spirit spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, in my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hand, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of we pray, O Lord our God, that this offering of our service, by it make it an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in its substance, their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of God's people, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fall, fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you and your families and your friends. I invite you to offer each other a sign of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ in whatever way is appropriate. Peace of Christ, Miguel. Peace of Christ, Antonio. How's the peace of God? Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. My sisters and brothers in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us rise and pray. Sanctify by your invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this offering of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We go forth then having those words of Jesus echoing in our hearts and in our minds. Remember, I'm with you all days to the end of time. No matter what is happening in your life or has happened in your life, remember, I'm with you all days to the end of time, Jesus is saying to us. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you this day and in the days and weeks ahead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.